We continue to this lecture by developing a business plan for the new business. We continue to this lecture by discussing developing a business plan for a new business. So what is a business plan? It's a written document that must accomplish three main objectives. And the first objective is to identify and describe the nature of business opportunity or the new venture. The second objective is to present a written plan of how the entrepreneur plans to exploit the opportunity. The third objective, the second objective is to present a written plan of how the entrepreneur plans to exploit the opportunity. Here, the business plan explains the key variables of the success and the failures of the new venture. The third objective of the business plan is to attract investors or persuade a bank or other institution of persons who provide financial resources to lend the entrepreneur the money he or she needs to establish the business, the money or he or she needs to establish the business. So apart from this mentioned business plan, apart from the main objective of the business plan, a business plan provides many other benefits. The business plan provides many other benefits. So what are the benefits of a business plan? We can talk about one, it is systematic, realistic evaluation of a new business chances of success in the market. It's a systematic, realistic evaluation of a business chances of success in the market. A way of identifying the key variable that will determine the success of a new venture, as well as the primary risk that may lead to failure. So a business plan will help you to identify the main variables that are needed and also the risk, the primary risk that may lead to failure or success. It is also a game plan for managing the business successfully. So it gives you a plan that it can, you can follow to ensure that the business is being managed successfully. So a business plan also serves as a management instrument for comparing actual results against targeted performance. So with such a plan, it helps you to know how what you anticipated for and what actually happens. You try to compare the performance and with this gap in there, you try to fill in the gap and so that you ensure that if there's any missing link, you can help, we can, you can solve this um, problems and help the business grow. And also it's primarily for attracting money. It's primarily a business plan. It's also a primarily, it's primarily for attracting money and other financial resources, is primarily for attracting money and other financial resources. So given this importance, why must an entrepreneur write a business plan? Why must an entrepreneur write a business plan? Now, basically, an entrepreneur must write a business plan to sell the business to him or herself, to sell the business to him or herself, to sell the business to him or herself. Entrepreneur needs to convince him, him or herself that starting a business is right for him. An entrepreneur must convince, should be able to convince himself or herself that starting a business is right for him in his viewpoint as an investor. investor. So it should be able to, it should sound good to the uh, entrepreneur, the one starting the business, so that you'll be able to, once you're able to sell to yourself, then you can sell to others. Another important importance of or necessity of a business plan is to obtain bank financing, is to obtain bank financing. It's, sorry for the noise. Okay. Okay, sorry for the noise interruption. Um, another importance of um, a business plan is to obtain bank financing. Um, in the earlier times, um, a business plan, um, in uh, taking loan from a bank, banks basically required individuals to present um, a business plan. Today, that is not the case. Today, that is not the case. It's basically not one of the um, requirements for uh, taking a loan. 
Another importance we can also talk about is to obtain um, investment funds, is to obtain investment funds. So, so investment funds, unlike um, financing from the bank, um, you can also obtain funds from, or you can attract investors to invest in your company. When you have a good business plan, you can share it with investors and they will want to invest in your company. It also arranged strategic alliance. It also arranged strategic alliance in terms of joint research, marketing, and other collaborative efforts between small and large companies. So it helps you to have this kind of collaboration among people of similar businesses and helps you to attract, uh, 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 um, help you to have this network with these other uh, uh, um, collaborators helps you to have this network with these other collaborators. It also helps to obtain large contracts. So a business plan helps to obtain large contracts. So when small businesses seek substantial orders or ongoing service contract from major corporations and government institutions, the corporations often respond, or they often respond by letting them, um, asking them to present our entrepreneurs uh, presenting and a business plan. So for you to earn a large contract from bigger companies, they basically want to see as a small business, what is your, your business plan? And this is one of the requirements. Another thing to also have to take into consideration is that it attracts key employees. It attracts key employees. One thing that you should know is that when setting up a business, you should have the right employees. It has the right employees and it should, a business plan try to bring people with similar skills to that basic and, and field so that it can help the economy or it can help the business grow. Another important business of business plan is to complete measures and acquisition, is to complete measures and acquisition. So a business plan can be very helpful if the entrepreneur wants to sell the business to a large corporation. So in such a situation, if a business, a, a smaller business wants to sell it to a bigger company that is a merge with a bigger company, a business plan can be able to help in that uh, and manner. The last uh, uh, importance or necessity of a business plan to the entrepreneur is to motivate and focus the management team. So the entrepreneur, it's basically the business plan spells out the objective, how businesses grow and become more complex. The business plan becomes an important component of keeping everyone focused on the same goals. So it spells out the goals, the objective, and it helps management to focus on the goals that may be needed for entrepreneurs to grow, that may be needed for entrepreneurs to grow. So we continue our discussions with the stakeholders in the business plan. And basically, these are the people who are being affected or people involved or people who are needed in terms of a business. So um, when you talk of the business plan or the stakeholders, the stakeholders can be internal or external. Now, internal stakeholders here include the management and the employees. So a business plan is essential uh, um, for manage management team as they spell out the operating ventures for managers. So it is very important for management team um, they basically tells the vision that the entrepreneur has for the new business, the, the mission that defines the business, the overview of the key objective, and a clear understanding of the overall strategy for accomplishing the objective. So the managers, the managers team is the business plan spells out this for the management team, and it helps them to remain focused in terms of discharging their duty. Another important internal stakeholder is the employees, is the employees. Employees need to have a clear understanding of the venture mission and objective to be able to work towards attaining the objective. And that is an important, so they become an important section to a business plan. We can also talk about the, um, the external stakeholders. We can talk about the external stakeholders. So here, these are basically people who are outsiders. They're the outsiders to a business of whom the entrepreneur depends for the survival and the success of the venture, for whom the entrepreneur depends for the survival and success of the venture. So here we can talk about three main external stakeholders that are the, the customers, 
the investors and the banks, the customers, the investors and the banks. So who um, customers are almost always impressed by a business plan as it proves them that the entrepreneur has thought about the future. So customers are wanting to find that before I can become a customer to this business, is this business going to be sustainable? Is it going to be there in the near future? And so a business plan, when a business has a plan, it enforces or it, it informs customers that no, this um, a business actually is thinking of the future and it is indeed a good thing to do business with them. Now you can also talk about the investor. Now the investor who basically uh, um, brings the financial resource to the company with the business plan he tries to understand that the flow of the business try to understand the, the 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 process of how the business is being managed and how the business tends to be successful so that he wouldn't just invest his money into the business but will be he will raise capital the capital is raising to invest in this business he is assured of the his he's being protected he's being protected his investment is being protected. Another um, external stakeholder of a business plan, uh, in terms of a business plan, is the banks. The banks. So, uh, um, banks that gives loans to a company, they give loans, they give uh, 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 um, other forms of support to um, um, uh, businesses. They are actually concerned about the plan. And in terms, they, they are basically focused their 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 decisions on the capital, the collateral, the character, and the conditions. These four characteristics are basically what the um, the banks may focus their um, their discussion or their yeah. So this is what has been listed here. Banks actually focus on the capital. Um, the banks expect small business to have a capital base of an investment by the owner. So basically they expect about 50% that if you are trying to start a business, the banks expect the capital base of the business to be about some 50% in terms of, so that they can also know that, oh, once they have something, they can contribute to the business by giving in the loan that it's six for. Then you can also talk about the collateral. So the collateral here, the banks want to find out that in a case where the bank or the, 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 the business is unable to cater for itself, is there any assets of the, the business that the banks can, I mean, rely on? Because when such collaterals are given, it informs that the stakeholders or the entrepreneur would not want his collateral to go away or to be lost to the bank. So he puts in his effort to ensure that he works to attain these businesses. Another important feature the bank also look out for is what we call the character. The banks also look at the character. Now, the character here, basically, in terms of honesty, competence, determination, ability, and a good track record, the bank wants to look at all these features. And the last feature of the bank, in terms of requesting a loan, is the what we call the condition. The condition that are surrounding a loan decision making. Banks will consider factors relating to the business operation, such as the potential market growth, competition, and form of ownership, because the bank is basically concerned and with all these things in terms of the market growth, how the business is going to grow, in terms of the competition, whom are you competing with? So that because certain competition can lead at least to growth or can lead to the fall of the, with the business or the form of ownership, which is also important, so that the banks will know who is liable in terms of any default, who is liable in terms of any default. So this section represents a matrix for um, analyzing a business. So in this matrix, we look at the, the situation of when we have a high return on investments or a low return on investments. So the investor's matrix. Now a product, um, we look at uh, certain issues. And the issues are what have been listed in the boxes here. So a product service fully developed, some market established, acceptance by users, acceptance level of owner of own equity, patent protection, and experience management team. So in terms of um, low investment, the product service idea only, acceptance not tested, and the market assumed patent protection acceptable track record of entrepreneur and team. 
So once um, basically a bank look at this thing, they can tell that no, this investment or they look at these factors that have been listed here, they can tell that this business plan actually has a high returns. So they will look at how the product is being developed. They look at the, how there's an established market, that is there's a high market, the, the, there's acceptance by the um, consumers, there's a high level of borrowed funds the financial projections out of the um out of line with the industry management team has an, a unique uh, a good track record with that then they believe that there's high uh, uh, um, returns on investment when the the matrix shows the other way that is the service product idea only there's only a service product idea only the product is not being tested in the market so you're not sure as in whether it's going to be accepted or not. The, the market is basically assumed. There's no um, um, uh, existing market. You are assuming that when you go to the market, you're going to do well. There's, so the market projection may not be in line with reality. And a single entrepreneur without any track record will also may, may, may signal to the, 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 the people who, or the, the stakeholders that this is, I mean, uh, a low return or a low re, uh, return investment a low return investment. So we continue by considering um, the scope of a business plan, how much planning is needed. Considering that determine, considerations that determine the amount of planning should include the following. Now to consider uh, the amount of um, the planning, it should include the following. The star and ability of the entrepreneur, the preference of management team, the complexity of the product or service being offered, the competitive environment, and the level of uncertainty in business management. Then the level of uncertainty in business management. So in developing a business plan, there are two things basically we look out for. We look out for the basic formats, which is in the written presentation and the content or the component of the business plan. So we look at the format of writing it and the content as to what should go in there. So first of all, we look at the format of the business plan. And under the format of the business plan, basically, we say that determines who should, the key issues here that um, the entrepreneur should focus on is that who should write the plan? Who should write the plan? Basically, in certain situations, they consult um, an expert or a legal a lawyer or somebody in a, a business aspect to draft the plan and identify the necessary skills to write the plan there is no rigid rules regarding the format of a business plan appearance is important how basically they look like how you present the the uh, format and also the number of pages and the number of pages here we are looking out for it should be and between five to 20 pages. It should be between five to 20 pages. After we looked at the formats, after we have looked at the format um, of the business plan, another thing that I also talked about is the content. So how, what should be the content of a business plan? Now there should be an executive summary. In the drafting a business plan, there should be an executive summary and basically it is um, it gives you an overview of the total business plan then there should be a general description of the venture so the general description of the venture it says whether it is manufacturing a retailing or a service or what type of business it is so the general description of how the uh, uh, um, the business organization is going to be what type of legal organization is even going to take the third thing that we can also talk about is the product and service plan. So what goes into the content? So you first of all write the executive summary, you give a general description of the, 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 um, the company, the, the product and the service plan. So here you basically describe the product and service and point out any unique features. You should also be able to explain why people will buy the product or service. So you explain why people will buy the product or service. Another third uh, important content in the business plan is the marketing plan. The marketing plan. So here, here under the marketing plan, customers will be the. You have to tell um, who the customers are going to be and what type of competition the business will face. So you tell you should spell out who the business 
um, the, the, customer, the customer targets and the competition is likely to face. Then also the management plan, you should be able to also identify key, under the management plan, you should be able to identify key players, the actor investors, the management team, the directors, and start to the experience and competence they possess in making sure that the business strike. Another thing that you should also talk about under the content of the business is the operating plan. Here you explain the type of manufacturing and operating system the business will use. You explain the type of manufacturing the business will use, describe the facilities, whether you are going to be more labor intensive or capital intensive, more labor intensive or capital intensive, and even the raw materials that you are going to employ, the raw materials that will be employed. Another important um, um, key in terms of a business plan, the content of a business plan, is the operating, is the uh, financial plan, is the financial plan. Here you specify the financial needs and contemplated sources of uh, financing. So we talk about your revenues, your costs and your profits. We talked about the, the your financial needs, how, what is the revenue projection? What is the cost projection? And what is the profit projection? And yeah, what is the cost projection? The last thing maybe you also talk about is supporting materials. You can also talk about um, supporting materials. Here, so here we present a simple guide in how to develop a business and plan. So as what we discussed earlier, the general description, in terms of what goes into the content, the general description, basically you should have your name, your location, the nature, the primary product of the service, the current status. You can also talk about the legal form of um, organization. The next thing to talk about is also the products and the uh, um, service. And first of all, um, the product and service plan. Here too, we talked about, we've given you certain features or things that you can guide you to explain that section. So if you have been contacted by um, anybody to draw a business plan, first of all, we have talked about the fact that how the structure, the formatting, we've also talked about the content. So the under the content is what we are specifying that we first of all have an executive summary, which should be about a page to three, one page to three, that basically talks about the total, an overview of the total business plan and you go into the content. So in the contents, these are the outline, the general company description, what should go in there, the name, location, the legal form, everything. So this guide can actually help you and as a, a business management student that you can also develop a business plan. So I believe that you can even give a try to this concept and try that if you have a business plan in mind, you should try and develop a business plan and maybe we can have a discussion about it later on. Okay, another concept we also discuss on the business plan is to give a general description of a new venture, is to give a general description of a new venture. It should be brief, but an accurate description of a new venture is very necessary. A brief and accurate description of a new venture is necessary. So in giving a brief and accurate dis um, description of a new uh, venture, these are some of the important questions that you need to look out for. Is this a, a startup, buyout or expansion? Basically, if there is a history that is already there or it's a new setup, you should be able to give a general um, history about the business, which is already in existence. So these questions are very important. Is this startup a buyout or an expansion? Has this business begun operation? What is the firm's mission statement? What was this business started? Where was this business started? What is the basic nature and activity of the business? What is the primary product of service? Which customers are served? What is the business manufacturing, business manufacturing retailing service or another type of industry, another type of industry. These are some of the more important questions that are also added. What are the current and objective and um, projected states of this industry? What is the business stage of the development? What are its objectives? What is the history of this company? What achievements 
have been made to date, what which changes have been made in the structure of ownership, what is the firm's distinctive competence. So as we have discussed, in terms of the content as to how you describe the venture, this, if you really want to give a very thorough or a brief descri description, which will actually spell out all the points that we've talked about, these are basic questions you should ask yourself. And once you find solutions to these questions, then you realize that you'll be able to give a very good description of the venture or your business that you intend to undertake. Okay, we continue our discussion by analyzing the market. Now, once an entrepreneur develops a good, he must make sure or must in his mind he may be thinking that there is a reliable market for sorry for the an entrepreneur engaging in a new venture must adapt or must try to understand the market setting. And in understanding the market setting must also ensure that there is a reliable market or adapt a market strategy or adapt a market strategy. So the analysis of a new venture market and the development of a market strategy should involve the following. It should involve the concept, the identification of a target market. There should be research and forecast into the target market and a market plan or strategy for the selected market segments. So there should be, this will help you to analyze the market well before you engage in any new venture, before you engage in any new venture. Okay, so you also must determine the financial need of a new venture. And it is essential that the entrepreneur understand the financial statement and how to interpret them. The entrepreneur must also understand how profitability is assessed. So in um, the, and the, um, determine the financial needs of a new, of a new event, uh, venture, you should be able to understand the flow or how to go about your finances. You should be able to understand financial statements. You should be also be able to understand profitability an entrepreneur must have the ability to determine their venture financial requirements. You should be have you should be able to add, um, and determine the venture's financial requirements. Let us conclude today's discussion by discussing the location of a business. One important thing about um, a business striving is to know the location, the choice of location. Now, the choice of location may be influenced by a whole lot of factors. One, we can talk about the source of raw materials. So a location of a business can be close to the available raw materials is going to be used so that it, they, they will not incur um, other transportation costs. So you can locate your business close to raw materials. Also availability, of um, labor, it can be um, um, availability of labor. Here we are talking about the fact that if you are going to be labor intensive, they require skills to operate, um, assemble the machines, the business, uh, the machines in the business. They should be, I mean, available, and your business can be located close to where the human resource is. Your business can be located to where the human resource is. So in certain certain business, these are some of the factors. Another is also the proximity or access to the market. This is very important, the access, uh, proximity and access to the market. You should be close to a market because if it is far from a market, then the which means that you may incur other co uh, costs. So for a business that is being uh, um, um, operating in, in China and the market, uh, target market is in the US, then before the commodity gets to US market, you realize that there's some form of uh, um, uh, uh, um, transport cost or some form of transportation cost in there. So you should be able to, when you're starting a business, you should consider all these factors which uh, even in terms of the labor market, which one is the cheaper source? You can then, you, you may have the skill, but certain, um, the labor cost in terms of uh, um, South Africa is different from the labor cost in terms of the US. So as a business entity, you must be able to take into consideration where would make my business profitable, which labor source, which labor source is basically needed. 
Another important factor in terms of locating a business is the availability and the cost of transport facility. So if you decide to, I mean, site your business far from the source of raw materials or the um, far from a market center, then you should be also be able to know that wherever, wherever you are citing your business, there is a reliable and a cheaper um, transport so that it can convey the goods from one section to another section or to other market that we'll be targeting. Another important um, um, location factor is the availability and the cost of power and water. These are very important. Is there energy? Is there water? Because these are all needed in terms of the thriving of a business. Availability and the cost of sites and building. So where you are siting, are you going to site in an estate where it's going to be capital intensive or it's going to be more expensive? Because certain areas are more expensive than the others. So basically, you try to uh, the cost, uh, we try to minimize cost by citing it at a place where you, you, you consider the site and the building. Because in certain building or locations, to, you cannot just site um, 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 a factory or uh, it's not, um, it's a residential area. So maybe the chemicals that you use in your uh, product may not be reliable, or even the noise may not be good to site the, the business there. Another important thing also to, is the availability of capital. So availability of capital. There you can talk about the uh, uh, um, the and the supply of uh, um, capital, specific conditions. So um, in terms of trying to get access to um, uh, and finance, certain um, um, businesses or certain creditors, such as banks or other people, are interested in uh, um, the location. So they are interested in your location whether it's going to be profitable or not profitable because certain locations may prone to risk where people may come to steal or not to steal so which will also have effect on their capital uh, and that they are going to give to the the, the the company another important factor you can also look out for is the attitude regulation and the tariffs of the local authority so wherever you are locating a business, you should consider the regulations, the tariff structure in that particular location. Another important factor that you can also look out for is the existence of um, the existence, existing business environment. What kind of business environment in there? Is there a competition? Is there available space? Is there banking? Is there a communication, um, communication facilities? So the existing business uh, um, provision is basically important for um, your location of businesses. It will, can also consider the social environment. So the social environment here, uh, the provision of satisfactory housing, the education, the uh, medical, the recreation and other shopping for employees and proposed businesses. These are all important for locating the business. You should also consider the climate, the climate. So. Climate can influence the acquisition, the retention, and the productivity of personality. That is one thing that we should know, the climate type. Because if the weather is cold, it affects the productivity. If the weather is hot, it affects the productivity. So the climate condition of the environment should also be taken into consideration. Central government policy. So this may encourage or discourage the establishment of certain types of businesses. Uh, certain types of businesses, certain whether there's some tax holidays or tax school, uh, concessions, some tax holidays or tax concessions, uh, basically you have to take all this into consideration. What are the government uh, and policies in terms of establishing a business? And personal preference. So the personal preference here basically relates to areas in which entrepreneurs and their families prefer to live. So maybe you want to start your business in areas in which your, your, your family or you are, I mean, you want to Give back to the community. You want to give back to the community. You want to give back to the community. So, um, in terms of what we have discussed today, we have discussed the legal forms of businesses, certain features in terms of the control ownership. The entrepreneur must be able to know that if I want to engage into this business, how should this business be run? Should it be an individual sole proprietorship? Should I form partnership? Should I engage in a close corporate? or a company, whether being public, private, 
um, state agency, you should be able to understand the, the business trust and um, the cooperative society. Once an entrepreneur understands these various types of businesses, he will be able to make informed choices as to the form of business he wants his business to be. Then we also talked about the fact that um, business plan, then we have talked about the um, business plan, what goes into a business plan, the fiscal outlook and the content outlook. And uh, we've even given you an example as to the structure as to how a business plan should look like. So I hope by the end of this course, you guys should be able to draft a business plan, become experts in business management and be drafting business plan for others. And then we also talk about the location factors, which are very important in citing a business. On that note, we'll end today's lecture and we'll continue with our discussion on the platform.